It's time to upgrade the Centon. I've got the hardened steel CNC diff carriers right here. This has got this is directly from A Main, all the way assembled, ready to go. And they even say EXB on them. We're gonna get these put into the Centon and take it for a drive. Let's go. This is my Centon right here. I've also got the Scorched RC inner fenders to go on this thing as well. That's for another video. I've already kind of started prepping myself to get this done. There's a thing with a, a little pin where you have to extend the body mount holes up. But that's for a whole nother video because that deserves its own video. This right here, these right here look pretty darn nice. What we're gonna do is, gotta get into it. Look at that. You know, the way we have to wash these things at the Exoflex kinda causes some issues. But anyway, we're gonna try to get that freed up and tear into this thing. All right. Let's get digging. The first thing I gotta do is take the transmission out. There's a screw underneath the chassis for that. I'm gonna take that out, get the little lock taken out, then get the transmission and all that up. Uh, I've been told by you guys that it likes to pack sand into there. We're, we're about to see. Cause this is really, sounds pretty bad. You, okay, let me get to work. With the motor out of the way. Mm-hmm. You guys told me this likes to pack up with sand. So let's open this up. The motor seems to be okay. But this bearing right here is locked up. That bearing there is toast. Uh, this bearing over here looks to be okay. But anyway, yep, I'll definitely clean all this out. Let's check these units out right here. Now this one, I actually adjusted the shims. I adjusted the shims so it would actually flow freely. This particular one I'm about to open up to show you guys the shim stack in it. It is kind of tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the shim stack here. I'm not planning for big power for this thing. I'm not doing any speed runs, just nice simple laps around the track. So yeah. And besides, these CNC steel gears should be a lot better than the stock plastic ones, right? And I haven't broke those. There's your pinion gear and bearings. That diff there actually had three shims over here. This one only has one. I'm gonna move that one over to here and put it back together. When you're reassembling this back into the case, see that, see that little notch right there? That keeps you from putting the ring gear on the wrong side. And now I have two diffs that actually turn nice and smooth. And now it's time to dig into this back end. You just take some bolts loose from underneath and the top of this thing pops right off. With the three big screws out of the way, look at this. There's your whole differential assembly. And here is the stock plastic diff. Yes, it is definitely plastic gears, but you know, plastic nowadays is a whole lot nicer than the plastic from just 10 years ago. To get the axles off, I'm going to pop the U-joint out from the cup that actually goes into the diff. There's a screw inside of there that actually holds everything together. And that was it. I took those, eased them underneath the U-joint, and just kind of pried up and popped it loose. Looks like I did okay. I don't think they're broke. There we go with those. They are in, and it appears I was actually successful and didn't actually break anything. Nice. Well, I got them in. And a major pain in the butt trying to not break these and get them in there correctly and all that. Major hassle, I'm going to tell you right now. There must be a pair of pliers or something that can pop these in and out super smooth that I don't have. But anyway, they are in. Now it's time to put back into that. And here we go. Finally get to set this back in. Do you see that little recess right there? That's where the ring gear goes. You try to put it in the other way, it's not going to work out too well. So that drops in there beautifully, just like that. And yes, I'm gonna add some grease. There we go. Now, most of this grease is just simply gonna fling off, but you know, it is what it is. I'm just simply using some Lucas White Lithium grease. Eh, it's slick, it'll work. Well, let's see. It's better. Getting to the front wasn't too bad. A couple extra bolts, but that's no big deal. I'm going to pop this out and now I get to deal with those 
half shafts again. Yay! Woohoo! I found a better way to do it. Go right through that little hole right there. Kind of hard to see. And you can get the, the screw like that. Woo! Much better. Yeah, apparently I did the rears the hard way. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't call it easy by any stretch of my imagination, but it was definitely easier than what I did with that back end. As I'm putting this back in, you can listen. Yeah, I definitely got to check those hub bearings. Time to clean this out and get a new bearing on there and we should be good to go. Brand new DSM 10 by 15 by four bearings. And look at the spur gear. Already showing some signs there, huh? Could be from the sand or anything, I don't know. But chances are good I'll be opening this back up soon. Transmission is easy to get off though. That's a nice thing. Well, let's see. Oh, that rolls so much better. I am going to check those wheel hexes though, or at least the hub bearings. I'll just check those off camera. If I find something, I'll show you. There we are, guys. Now, I did change out both inner bearings on the front hubs. They were quite gritty. The back was actually surprisingly fine. It rolls so much smoother now. So, you know what? We're going to power this thing up and get my freshly gone through clean truck out into the sand. Oh, look at that, my Firma sticker. Let's go. Listen to this. Might be a little bit louder with the metal gears. But man, you know, I can tell there's less rolling resistance. Look at that. That is so nice, guys. So nice. Now, I can't actually get, you know, full laps right now because working on a big old exoplex sign on the back of there. <laughs> the wall's getting the upgrade. But anyway, what I can do is hit a few jumps and give it a drive for you guys. This thing is fast. I, I, can, I can tell it's faster. Nice. Okay, I definitely got more driveline noise now. Certainly got more driveline noise. Ooh. Now it's a little bit more powdery out here too, so. Oh, caught some air on that one, didn't I? Oh, for some stupid reason, I hit the brakes. That was my fault. But you know, as we all say, oh, it's a durability test. <laughs> that was a lot better. Nice. Smooth running truck, it really is. Can't wait to get those inner fenders on. Whoa, did you guys see that thing just float? I think it held up in the air for like an hour and a half. I just fast forwarded the video, you know, so it wouldn't be like that, but. Okay, big old bird, I hear you. Nice, perfect. Well. I guess the drive is what it is. Um, I can't really run any laps, so. All right, I'm gonna get the big old Exoplex back there. Well, there you go. I've gotta say, uh, look at this. It rolls, it rolls freer now than it did when I got it brand new out of the box. And I kind of feel that some of that is that they had to shim the pinion and spur gear or the ring and pinion and the axles together kind of tight because they were plastic, you know? You don't want those to have any slop because they'll just strip out. I mean, the spur gear isn't looking all that happy either, you know? But um, I, I kind of feel it was tight right out of the box, but I just figured that's kind of the way it was meant to be, but no, it's a lot smoother now. Look at that, it actually has some rock to it. It wouldn't rock before. But anyways, it is a little bit louder with the metal gears, but I'll take it. I'll take it. Now, as far as the uh, driving goes, I would have to say it's gonna drive about the same. I can't see it being any different other than being a little bit stronger at the axles now. So, 
in that description. I'll link those up down below. Um, truck is absolutely awesome. Even with the stock plastic discs, just clean everything out. But anyway, check that description. I'll link up the Centon, the discs, the 4S discs, all that stuff. Use those links. They are affiliate links. A main eBay, Amazon, and Horizon. Helps out the channel when you guys use them. So, you know what to do. Check that description. Use those links. Hit that subscribe and ring that bell. And Jennifer, you're awesome. Catch you later. If you're still watching, you are top shelf. You are the cream of the crop, the pick of the litter. You are phenomenal. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. It means a lot to me. Now, down below, there are links for the products you see. Also, for channel memberships, if you guys want to be a part. Channel members get early viewing on pretty much everything that I can. So, guys, check that description. There's a lot of info down there. Thank you all for watching.